What is up, guys? Commander Andrew 2015 here, back at it again with another Hearts of Iron Fort tutorial. To get today, we're going to be discussing a little bit about Navy, little tips and tricks, how your fleet composition should look, a couple of designs of ships, how combat works, what light and heavy attack does, etc. Some submarine stuff, all, all the good stuff you know to actually make use of the Navy. Because I'm not going to lie, Paradox kind of sold when creating. The Navy and Hearts of Iron 4. I, I know I got an update, but it's kind of mid. It's kind of just really clunky, and it really drives off newer players, etc. I, I myself started out this game, no idea how Navy works, and no intention on like trying to become a better Navy player because it's clunky, it's boring. Forget about it, you know? All you need is land and air. But I'd like to open up your mind, if you will, learn a little bit how Navy works, and so you can actually use it in your games. Alright, I'm, re I'm recording this out of sequence, kind of, so this is probably going to be the first clip you guys see, but I'm going to ask the obvious. What, why should you build a Navy in Hearts of Iron 4? Well, i got a couple reasons for you. You may just, uh, you may not care about the Navy, maybe watching this video out of interest, but the Navy is quite practical and can give you a lot of good stats, and is able to deal with the enemy's fleet and divisions quite effectively. Now, what am I talking about? So, let's say we have these uh, infantry division of MMO having a hard time pushing it across this river right here. Bring out your fleet. Put it in the tile beside it. They're going to get short bombardment. This goes up to minus 25% stat reduction in the enemy's defense. That is something. That is nothing to look past. Navy... Navy on naval tiles can absolutely add a significant bonus, especially possibly if you're invading the Soviet Union and you're trying to attack Leningrad. Having having your fleet out here absolutely helps you push these tiles and Leningrad itself. Uh, what else to talk about? If you are being convoy raided a lot, if you are trying to transport divisions from possibly Wilhelmshaven to Oslo to Stettin to Koningsberg, just trying to move divisions by sea, or or if you're trying to trade with people across the globe, possibly we're trying to buy some oil from Venezuela as Germany. Our convoys are being co uh, convoys are being raided across the, across the ocean. Our convoys are going to be getting raided, and th that is going to destroy your uh, trading efficiency, and it means you're not going to be able to get the goods you are purchasing. And for your divisions being raided. Your divisions are being raided by submarines, you're, you're going to be losing divisions by sea, which is it is something to really remember. Like, you can destroy enemy divisions at sea, and they are completely wiped from the game. It's a, it's a big deal when we're dealing with this huge world war, world war, you're fighting three different majors. Every division matters. Every division matters. And furthermore, build a navy so you can destroy the enemy navy and raid them. If you wipe out the English fleet in Scapa Flow, English Channel, whatever, if you gain naval supremacy in the North Sea, Eastern North Sea, English Channel, whatever, you can naval invade them, you can cap them, and you can get that peace deal you're really fighting to get just by investing a little bit into your navy to get that victory. Absolutely worth it. Or maybe you're doing something in Africa, something in the Pacific, where your enemies are moving divisions to islands, etc. They're being transported in open ocean. If you wipe their fleet, you can practically convoy raid everything with your main fleet right here. If you can raid these enemy divisions, these convoy routes, it's going to not only destroy enemy supply lines, it's going to destroy enemy divisions, and it's going to destroy their ability to get outside resources to them. Which is absolutely game changing. This can win you wars. This can destroy you multiple enemy divisions. Especially if you got a country like the United Kingdom, which is very notorious for its naval invasions. Naval invasions across the English Channel. If you pay attention to the alarm, the very loud alarm you get, realize they have divisions in the English Channel transporting into, let's say, Calais. Send out your main fleet, destroy whatever is escorting them, and you've just destroyed 10 divisions for free using your navy that you forgot you forgot about not cared about but caring a little bit about it 
investing maybe five dockyards, all you really need, that is Germany, and then doing the naval dockyard expansion focus trees, it gives you a fleet that can really provide you a bit of firepower, really a bit of hitting power against these uh, other nations. It, this goes for all nations. Destroy their fleet, convoy raid the ever-loving hell out of them, and it will give you some good results, some really game-changing results, and it can really lead you to getting that peace deal. First thing we're going to be discussing when it comes to Navy is what the ideal fleet composition should be. Here I, I have what I would describe as an ideal fleet composition that you can use to destroy other nations' fleets. This works effectively well against the AI. I'm not so not so sure about multiplayer, but this is the general setup. You have four carriers, eight battle cruisers, twelve light cruisers, and forty-eight destroyers. You can add a little bit more destroyers, light cruisers, etc. But main fleet, or well, the mainstay of your fleet should be four carriers and eight heavy ships. Eight heavy ships being battle cruisers, fast battleships, or heavy cruisers. I'm choosing battle cruisers because as a decent uh, top speed, 29.7 knots, decent amount of heavy attack, decent amount of anti-air, decent amount of armor. Pretty ideal vessel to go up against with your carriers because, if you didn't know, carriers need to be screened by a heavy ship. Heavy ships in-game are usually screened by destroyers and light cruisers, but carriers, on the other hand, require two capital ships in this case, two of these battle cruisers to be able to be screened properly. If a heavy ship or carrier is not screened properly in a battle, it will receive lessened stats and you have a lot higher chance of losing that battle. So, get the four carriers, eight battle cruisers, means all the carriers are going to be properly screened. And by having 12 light cruisers and 48 destroyers, we make sure not only that we are screening the battle cruisers, with these light ships, but also having a decent amount of light attack in the battle. Because for this fleet, we're going to be prioritizing light attack. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, top speeds and etc. So, for this carry design, top speed is 30.8 knots. That should be the speed we are aiming for about, about a bit over, a bit less. This is the desired speed we're looking for. 29, 31 knots, something in that ball range. Nothing slower. Def definitely nothing slower. It can be faster. But 30.8 30 knots is the speed of this carrier. And because this is a, car a carrier task force, we want our ships to be in line with the speed, practically. Okay? So having a ship with 21 knots is going to dramatically reduce the speed in your task force, all right? So, if I come over here, these pre-dreadnoughts that Germany has, a top speed of 22 knots, an 8-knot decrease compared to these carriers, which means your task force is overall slower. And by having an overall slower task force, it's going to give you a couple of disadvantages. First of all, it's going to, uh, how do you describe this? When you are searching for a battle, when you're on patrol or uh, strike force, naval invasion support, com combat force, etc., your task force is going to be significantly slower, and it can miss the opportunities to engage the enemy fleet. The enemy fleet is faster than yours. And second of all, having top speed uh, allows you to retreat faster from a battle. Uh, this is my train of thought, going for a long time. But having the higher speed is going to allow your fleet to disengage out of the battle faster, which can save you a lot of ships. If you were to have possibly one of those pre-dreadnoughts in your task force like this, the whole task force is going to have that speed of the dreadnought because the dreadnought is in the task force. If we took that pre-dreadnought out, it'd go back up to 30.8 knots, which means we can escape that battle a lot faster and a lot of our ships will be able to survive. If we had the pre-dreadnought, the whole task force would be waiting around for that pre-dreadnought's top speed of 22 knots. Alright, now, to continue on, I'm just going to talk about, just recap a little bit. We have our carriers, we have our battle cruiser screens, and then we have our light cruiser screens, and then our destroyer screens. We all want 
for all these ships, we want about 31, 30, 29 knots. Keep all the ships around there so they are fast. They are, if they are fast, they can engage the enemy quicker, and they can retreat from battles quicker, etc. Okay. Uh, you can also use alternatives, though, for the heavy cruiser screen, or er, heavy ship screen for the carriers. Instead of battle cruisers, you could, in fact, maybe use a heavy cruiser design. Something like this. 31 knots, okay stats. It's not going to win against a battleship. But it's meant to just screen the carriers so that the carriers can do their damage. Uh, ever much so, uh, you could use fast battleships. Instead of these battle cruisers, maybe you're able to create a fast battleship design. Possibly, maybe you're moving a battery. If you're just wanting to uh, utilize the carriers to do your damage, maybe you can take the disadvantage of losing a bit of heavy attack, but uh, gaining the overall task force. Or, or maybe you're fine with uh, having just a 28 knot task force. That that's that's completely okay as long it's as long as it's above about 25 six knots just you have an edge over the enemy's forces I'm talking about enemy's forces they're going to be ai for this tutorial esque all right but let's say you're in the position of the united kingdom you are building up a newer fleet you have what do you say i, I don't know maybe you got carrier threes some battleship threes being built in your production line and you need possibly a stock gap measure to stop maybe the german fleet if they're building one the italians definitely need to stop them what you can do take these old battleships you you have 12 of these semi-old battleships nelson's are a little bit newer but these queen elizabeth and revenge classes what you can do you can upgrade these I know they're 21 knots, but because these ships are going to be used in such a close proximity with the enemy, such as in the Eastern North Sea, the North Sea, the Tyre, the, the Mediterranean, you know, th there's not much room to maneuver in these areas as is the North Sea and the Mediterranean. For a 30 knot battle fleet, I, I would definitely say that is more of the Philippines, Pacific area, or Atlantic area to be fighting in. But for these Mediterranean North Sea seas, you can definitely upgrade these old Queen Elizabeth Revenge Nelson classes. Just throw on a military industrial ordnance well if you have it. Upgrade their heavy batteries to possibly two or three. That's going to increase their heavy attack by not much, but something. Something increase their secondary batteries, especially the radar. If you have access to Tier 2, Tier 3 types of radar. Add that on. It's going to add surface detection, sub visibility, etc. Fire control A. You can upgrade these ships, definitely. Just to deal with the, like these very close in seas, like I said, the North Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Black Sea, all this kind of stuff. Where <clears throat> there's not much place for the enemy fleet to go, as is. You understand? But when I'm dealing with something like the Atlantic or the Pacific, these huge areas of ocean. It's going to require a 30 knot battle uh, task force to be able to catch the enemy in time and retreat possibly in time. But if you are Britain in this case, definitely you can refit these older ships, especially as uh, the United States. You can refit, refit these older ships, have just a slower battle force for these areas. And also so, for these slower ships, you can use them as uh, shore bombardment task forces. I'll show that real quick <clears throat> on Germany. <clears throat> here we have our very obsolete task force here, these Deutschland class cruisers. Throw in other just slow old ships that are not much worth to us in a task force, a modern task force. Use these as shore bombardment for your infantry. Bring out these task forces to a uh, naval tile you are attacking to, you're going to get shore bombardment. So they still do have some use. Alright, so now hopefully you understand the speeds of task forces and task force uh, composition. Four carriers, eight battle cruisers. That, that's your mainstay, this is your bread and butter, etc. You be a little bit over and under, but aim for this if you want to destroy the AI. 
Um, we talked a little about shore bombardment, using your fleet like that. Having a slower battle fleet in these kinds of zones, absolutely, or a shore bombardment. I'm not saying go for a 21 knot speed battle fleet you know, only in these zones. The main thing you should take about uh, speeds and task forces, higher the better. Higher the better. The faster you are, quicker to respond, quicker to disengage. That's what you need. All right, for submarines, they're a little bit different of a task force. You want to split these up using the split, select the task force in half, and it's going to split them in two. Click it again, click it again. Now you have eight. You can split them a little bit more to get the full ten, which is the complete number of task forces a admiral can command. And then you'd probably want to put these on combo rating for Germany in case of Bay of Biscay, Western Approaches. Block, block up the supply and convoys to the enemies, alright? But, I'm gonna, gonna be real with you. Subs, sub uh, ones and twos, they're worthless, alright? Easily taken out by a simple uh, ASW screen, anti-submarine warfare screen, easily take these ships out. What If you want to build submarines, I would recommend building a submarine 3. Submarine 3, torpedo tubes, you can have torpedo tube 4s, submarine engine 4s, etc. But submarine 3s with the improved snorkel. You are going to have a surface detection of 21, but it is... It's a, it, it's a remarkable amount, nonetheless. 21 knots. Now you may, you may be thinking, why not just use the submarine 4 if I have access to the submarine 4? You see, the submarine 4 costs an extra chromium. And when you are fighting a world war, every bit of resource is very important, especially these harder-to-get minerals, such as chromium. You don't want to sacrifice your entire industry just for sub-4s, when there's not that much of a difference between sub-3s with this snorkel, snorkel and sub-4s. So, for submarines, I'd definitely say just wait for, wait for uh, submarine 3s, that's what I'm saying. Uh, what else? Yeah, just the uh, utilizing, if you want to split ships off, you just select them, hold down the shift button, and it will pick multiple. Then you click this button, create a new task force. This creates a, another task force. If you want to combine them, select all, select merge, and it will merge together. Um, yeah, the, the system's a little bit wonky, etc. For admirals, generally, uh, well, for Germany especially, for a mean fleet like this, <clears throat> I, I prefer Gunther Lucians to lead this. It's a little bit extra org, and the enemy has a higher chance to retreat. Career officer, better positioning. I'd say he's pretty good for the Kreese Marine, Germany Naval. Of course, with subs, Karl Dantz, easy pick. Um, free shore bombardment, slash lesser fleet. It doesn't really matter. You go with Wilhelm here. Interesting to note, <clears throat> Germany has access to a special type of ship, the Deutschland class heavy cruiser. Not pocket battleship, heavy cruiser. Now, this heavy cruiser, it doesn't look that impressive, but the range, the range these things have, across the globe practically. What I like to do is refit these ships a little bit, put them on combo rating, maybe around uh, South America here, Cape Verde plan. Sometimes you get uh, military access from Italy, go into the Indian Ocean raid. These ships have a very lar uh, large range, which is very effective at dealing with these convoys because most of the time, the AI will have on a convoy escort just lighter ships, light cruisers, destroyers, etc. Being a heavy cruiser, this is going to... I'm not going to say beat all of their screens. It's going to take some damage, but this is a... Absolute force to be reckoned with. So if you want to just spam these out and just disrupt the convoys, absolutely works. But please note, this is only for Germany. And for a, for this, uh, I'd probably say <clears throat> Hermann Bohem has a higher chance to retreat, which is kind of what you want. All right, well, hopefully you're still following and I have not confused you or gotten you lost yet. What, we've, what I've basically discussed is fleet composition, what kind of fleet should you aim to build or create, the speeds of that fleet and areas where the speed does not matter that much, but 
always remember speed is very important. Speed will win you battles or save your fleet. A um, little bit about how submarines work. Sub 3 is the best sub, th sub uh, only produce that practically. Sh shore bombardment groups, lesser groups such as this. But uh, use the term refit a lot. So what is refitting in Hearts of Iron? So refitting is taking one of these older ships like possibly the Revenges. Looking at these uh, abysmal stats, these are quite old modules they're using. And so we're going to upgrade them practically. Come over here to the Revenge class uh, design and the ship designer. You probably gonna need to click the show outdated button to see this. Come on in here and change some stuff around. Upgrade the main guns. It costs about 2,000 naval production. This is a, it's a decent amount to give the ship a little bit extra firepower for the modern age. Two things to remember, though, when refitting ships. We do not refit the engine, and we do not refit the armor. Let me, let me just show you. If you want to refit the, the engine and the armor for the ship, 17,000 industrial costs to refit the ship. 17,000. It would be cheaper almost to build two of the, two of these designs new rather than try to bring this ship to this new standard. So never, never refit engine or armor on these kind on ships in general. Okay, stick to the mini guns, stick to these secondary batteries, stick to these AAs. It was a cheap enough refit, two thousand to give the ship a little bit of a more fighting edge, given the circumstances of the game. And it's not too expensive to where it's like practically new ship. It's 2000 IC just to make these older ships a bit better, give the punch a little bit harder. So then save this design. Call it Revenge Refit. Don't mind the spelling. Revenge Refit. Go into your task force. Oh, let me just turn off. Yeah, Instagram search is off. Go into your task force. You see the Revenge class. Select them all, holding down shift and then left mouse button. Select them all. And you'll see this button up here. Refit ships. Click this button and you will see the revenge ship refit. Refit it. And it should, about, should take about 191 days for them to refit. Then they will go into dry dock, into the dockyard, and you will see them here in the production menu. And as you see, they are being refit with our dockyards. And one thing to improve refit, refit speed, actually, is come down here, Spirit of Navy, Naval Refit Yards, Ship Refitting Speed plus 25%. Honestly, pretty solid if we're going for these refits. You see, it's now down to the 16th of September. Quite, not, not game-changing, but it's a nice little change when you're trying to get as many ships out into the field as possible. All right, hopefully... You're still with me. I know Navy is quite confusing, and trust me, I, I've been in those exact shoes, get lost even watching YouTube videos. And so I'm going to keep recapping this. We've talked a little bit about fleet composition. Aim for a fleet, four carriers, eight battle cruisers, 12 light cruisers, 40 destroyers. This is a very solid fleet, quite perfect for taking on the AI. You don't have access to maybe carriers. Battleships will do just fine with this kind of setup. Hell, even a little bit more battleships, a little bit more cruisers, a little bit more destroyers. A little, there's a bit of flexibility, but aim to be faster than your enemies. Aim for that 30 knot range. Aim to be quicker to retreat and quicker to engage an enemy's task force. Okay, now that we've... Well, you guys have hopefully stayed with me, understanding these concepts. Uh, let's talk a little bit about experience. You can train uh, your ships out here by clicking the exercise button. They're going to train up. I'd recommend, before you engage, to get all of your ships to level 3. It provides a, a decent amount of advantage when you're fighting against an enemy force that is not experienced. As you see, them being level 1, minus 10% damage and defense and sorties. It's not, not good stats. Um, when it comes to designs, or, well, armaments, etc., for our carriers, we have them all loaded up with just naval bombers. Now, the concept of this task force is to utilize its uh, carrier naval bombers, these guys right here, to land basically an alpha strike 
on the enemy's fleet. Dudes, these fighters, these uh, naval bombers, are not meant to survive that much. They're meant to deal damage that is going to change the course of battle into our favor and allow our ships to destroy the enemies. Ideally, these uh, naval bombers will deal damage to the enemy's carriers or battleships or battle cruisers. It will reduce their organization, reduce their strength, maybe cause a little bit of strength damage, give them a, like a fire debuff, etc. But these are not top line fighters, in fact, or naval bombers. I will show you real quick. They are the basic hull, basic carrier frame with a basic torpedo, level 2 engine, armor plates, self dealing fuel tanks. It, nothing to ride home about. These are very basic. Their only goal is to survive a little bit. That's why we have a little bit of armor on here. Survive a bit, deal some damage, 13 attack, and just disrupt the enemy's battle line and carriers, basically. They're decently cheap, so put like three mils on this at the start of your game, and you will have a full carry task with this. Uh, next thing to really talk about uh, is tactical bombers. Tactical bombers are quite useful in these naval battles, especially when you have a good range. So we, with these bombers, we cover the Eastern Sea, a bit North Sea, so they can, in fact, do a lot of damage to enemy task forces, especially submarines. If you're playing as Germany and uh, we got French or German, or fr French, British, American subs operating Eastern North Sea, these these bombers they will find them and they will destroy them. Put them on naval strike, select the zone that you're going to be fighting in or you're being convoy raided, and they will bomb absolutely everything. See that here a little bit, just a basic bomb bay. I, these are a bit on the expensive side, but you don't need many of these to disrupt a submarine force or a, a task force. These do a decent amount of damage to ships 13, naval targeting 5. They're decent, good range, and port strike quite quite lethal. Okay, I, I realize this tour, this tour is probably going on for a bit long. I'm going to try to speed this up so it's not absolutely gut-wrenching to watch. Okay, uh, for, for this uh, task force, very basic setup. What we're going for is carrier with the most flight decks as possible to get the most number of aircraft as possible. You could add armor, but it's not it's not worth that much. Unless you're having a carrier 3 or carrier 4, then you can probably add armor. Stick to the 30 knots. It's a solid solid number. Uh, for battle cruisers, try to get your two main batteries in here, and then really focus on anti-air. Remember, these ships are being used to screen your carriers. And so these are going to help shoot down any aircraft or warships that are going to try to mess with your carriers. So really try to focus on that AA potential. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> for light cruisers, we're stacking a lot of light attack. Most of our armaments on the ship is light attack, a bit of piercing. The reason we do that is we are looking for a fleet that combines a decent amount of heavy attack, nothing to write home about. A carrier, uh, carrier strike force that can give us the advantage of that battle. And then a lot of light attack. This light attack is going to destroy the enemy screens incredibly fast. And that means that they're going to... Uh, what do you say? They're going to lose their screening efficiency. Which means their capital ships will not be screened. And those capital ships will perform incredibly poorly against our fleet. Furthermore, with our basic destroyers, it's nothing too crazy. Just some light attack. We... We want to kill enemy screens. They don't have screens. They don't have a screening efficiency or bonus. And the rest of their fleet collapses. Uh, yeah, that, that should pretty much cover the section. Alright, now, engaging in a battle. The best way, the most reliable way that I've found is setting your task force to always engage. And then out of all these options we have to utilize our fleet, we're going to use patrol. Okay, you may have heard you strike force, even invasion sport, etc. Put them on patrol, put them on always engage, and then put them to operate in a fleet uh, part of the ocean that you believe the enemy fleet isn't operating in. In this case, we have the English uh, fleet operating in the North Sea. Now, our fleet is going to go out and engage them, 
and they are going to find them because they are 30 knots, they are fast, they are on patrol, so they're going to be looking for them, and they are always gaining, always engaged no matter what, and so they are going to engage instantly. As we see here, slow it down a little bit, they are searching for the enemy fleet, and they found it. First thing you want to look for, what kind of weather are you fighting in? This is a shallow sea, there's many different types of zones and hearts of iron. It's also a storm, so this is not our best circumstances for our carriers to be really utilizing their naval problems. As you see here, I don't believe, no, they, they are not sorting due to the weather. You'll realize that if their uh, bomber, naval bombers or fighters are red, it means they've not deployed, they're not sorting currently. And so it's, it's a possibly a one I wouldn't say one sided. This is a without our uh, alpha strike. This battle may be a little bit tough, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, as we see here, they've already lost one destroyer. That is because we are stacking light attack in this fleet. Seven hundred and twenty light guns. I, I showed you the destroyers. I showed you the cruisers. They are stacking a lot of light guns. And these light guns are almost three, four times greater than the British light guns. So these light guns are going to destroy their fleet, and then they're not going to have the screening efficiency. Meaning, these capital ships are not screened, and they're going to have practically no attack against our fleet. Uh, the enemy fleet, in general, just, it's not that impressive. We have 400 heavy guns to their 380 heavy guns. We, we do have better stats currently. But the weather is still not favoring our carrier strike capabilities yet. As you see, British are losing substantial amount of screens, and as you see, it's already taken down a bit. Screening efficiency down to 95%. That's going to keep dropping the more screens that you lose. 90, 80. And as the screening goes down and down and down, these heavy ships and these carriers are going to lose their stats. They're going to lose their ability to attack our fleet. As you see, that we, we've already sunk three British battleships. The weather is being not kind to us, to say the least. Our, our naval bombers are having a hard time being able to sortie in this weather. But, as you see, we've completely destroyed the British uh, screening force with our destroyers and light cruisers because we stacked light guns. We made this an important stat in our fleets, and it has wiped the floor with the British screens. Meaning, the enemy's, uh, well, the British screening group for the capital ships, non-existent. And that means we are going to absolutely just wreck the, rem the remnants of these of this fleet. As you see there, British fleet, British fleet, absolutely wiped. Take note that our our naval bombers did not get a chance to sortie that much in this battle, due to the North Sea's very unfavorable weather. But regardless. We were able to wipe this British task force thanks to the use of our light attack, our light guns. Stacking light attack in Hearts of Iron 4, Navy, very important. I would say probably go with it the majority of the time. Now, picking right up after we've just wiped the British fleet, I'm going to discuss a little bit about uh, how, how air combat in these fleet battles works. Unfortunately, we did not get to the best example of how air combat works in that battle. But, uh, to keep it basic, uh, our, our fighters and our, more importantly, naval bombers of our fleet are going to target enemy capital ships. In, in order, these naval, or naval bombers in general, for these fleet battles, they will target the biggest ship possible. Meaning, they can target destroyers and light cruisers, but more than not, they will target the battleships the battle cruisers and the aircraft carriers first and more likely to target these these uh, classes of ship but the number one ship in fact that these naval bombers will target is the super heavy battleship this 
a monstrosity of a battleship, super heavy battleship platform. It is massive. It costs a ton. It's usually not worth it, to be honest. But with all I've said, it can possibly be worth it, just in a different sense. Only putting on one main battery, and then just stacking this thing with anti-air, to be honest. Stacking this whole ship just filled with anti-air. And it's at it's it's what I just told you. The carrier the carrier naval bombers and fighters in general will target the biggest ship they see. The first or well not first, the biggest ship in general they see. To have a super heavy battleship in your fleet composition means that the majority of the enemy fleet will in fact target this ship alone and allow your carriers to really survive the onslaught of the enemy air. But, as you see, we have about 50 anti-air attack on this battleship right here. This is going to obliterate the skies of enemy aircraft and give you a, a, a decent advantage, I'm not going to lie. But that, in turn, comes with a lower task force speed. And as I said, speed is pretty important in these naval battles. But if you're willing to take this 26 knot uh, task force main speed to get this level of anti-air in your task force, it, it can be worth it. You value uh, taking out the enemy air a substantial amount. This is still a bit pricey for a naval ship. Regardless, this is a, can po could possibly be useful in a multiplayer setting if you know your enemy is focusing a lot on naval bombers, tactical bombers, carrier fighters, and that you're likely not to win a uh, carrier v carrier fight due to their fighters and possibly other land based fighters, then this might be the solution to include one of these in your task force, have a little bit slower top speed, but bring in that anti air attack. Now, having these carriers, they're not just useful for a naval battle like I've just shown. They're in fact very useful in port strikes against the enemy. Think of Pearl Harbor or Taranto in our history. These pretty devastating attacks from these carriers into a port against an enemy task force. Now, in game they are not as powerful as in real life as I'm going to show you, but they can still cause a significant amount of damage and importantly, if the enemy fleet has disengaged from your battle and they are repairing in dry dock, you can harass them with these carriers. Simply bring your task force over to uh, the dry dock, dock, whatever the enemy's in, and you'll be able to tell that by this little icon right here, this little fleet icon. See it here as well. There, there's an enemy fleet here. There's one task force is docked in this new base. One here as well. That's how you know what port to target. Okay? Then we're going to assign these naval bombers to port strike. And then select them on the tile. Granted, these, these they might not they may not perform the best. These are cheap, and they do not have the best stats. But they're going to definitely harass and definitely going to cause some damage to the ships in uh, what is this place called? Scapa Bay, Scapa Flow, Scapa Flow. Yeah, or not even Scapa Flow is somewhere here, I believe. All right, as see, we've got our first and actually only of. Uh, enemy ship loss. Uh, this is, I guess, what was left of the British fleet that we engaged. As you see, our naval bombers have, in fact, sunk this in port. Now let's continue down the English coast to Newcastle. Alright. Make sure they're on port strike, and see the damage they can do. Okay, we've lost two, ins two naval bombers, but we are do we have done a little bit of damage. Not your Pearl Harbor Toronto, but there is some damage that has been committed. Okay. Now if the enemy fleet just sits in port, we can absolutely wipe them. Granted, we will take a bit of a loss in our uh, naval bombers, but the industrial uh, construction trade between these bombers and the enemy fleet completely in our favor. 
as you see, they're taking away, they're taking some damage, and eventually they're going to start losing ships. Let's speed this up a little bit. Like I said, it's not your Pearl Harbor or Toronto, but bit by bit, we are causing damage to their fleet. All from the safety of being outside, and this is absolutely harassing them. We are taking a bit of losses, I'm not going to lie, but this is, in fact, because these are not the best naval bombers, I'm not going to lie. These are these are meant to be cheap, they're meant to achieve that alpha strike and win you that battle. And they're also rookies, giving them worse stats, but... If you really just want to harass the enemy fleet like this and just take away from the damage, look at that. HMS Hermes 5%. And yet, yeah, Hermes is gone. So, bit by bit, you whittle down their fleet and you can absolutely wipe them this way. Let me just tag over to England real quick to show you the current state of their fleet. It's not looking so good. Well, for the carrier, at the very least. I see all these ships are taking a bit of damage over time. This is a this is a quite a big fleet, and so the naval bombers are having a hard time really destroying, really picking out a uh, what do you say a ship to target. But they're definitely doing damage over time. And if you just harass this fleet long enough, if it, if it tries to escape to possibly scap up, scap flow, Ember, Hell, you, you can follow it down. You can hunt it down, and you can force them to re-engage you. And if you got that Alpha Strike, if you got that initial victory, you can wipe, wipe the enemy floor. I'm going to quickly uh, touch on uh, Naval Doctrine and a couple of these Navy stats. Uh, first one, I would probably recommend going in Steel Aggression. Plus 20 chance to get the plus 1 level up. Also, the stuff kind of worthless. Uh, Spirit of the Navy, probably either Naval Reform, extra experience gain, or refit yards if you have a lot of ships to refit. Spirit Naval Command, definitely night fighting. All these other ones just don't provide much. Night fighting, get that straight, just flat bonus. Nighttime attack, nighttime squatting, it's pretty good. Uh, for Doctrine, this is a really get to build your fleet how you want. Fleet and being, a lot of nations start on that, especially the England, uh, United Kingdom. They have that big battle fleet. And so... It can provide a, some nice bonuses to these capital ships. I'm not going to lie. Trader interdiction. Um, also, surprisingly, pretty good like bonuses to these capital ships that we're going to be using in your task forces. Also, a bit of a uh, little bit of carrier stuff there. Also, nice to see. But especially for trade, trade interdiction, you're getting those big bonuses to your submarines. Absolutely big bonuses. Um, so, you probably use Trader Interdiction if you're going for that Submarine 3. You're not going to waste your time on Sub 1 and 2, but you, you, you have plans to build Submarine 3s once you're able to research them. Definitely go with Trader Interdiction. You will have very strong subs in the game. Uh, base Strike. It's going to give you a lot of bonuses to your carriers. And honestly, if you're spamming out carriers, like it's nothing like you got 12 carriers or something, I would definitely go with this. If, if your plan is... To get that alpha strike in your naval engagement and then just harass the enemy in their ports, definitely just go with force strike. But all, all these doctrines, they have their own merits, but I would definitely probably lean away from fleet and being. It's, it's okay. Provide some, some decent stats. But definitely, trainer interdiction or base strike is what I believe you should go for, depending on your plans for how your navy... All right, hopefully you've been able to retain something from this guide. You've been able to understand an aspect that you have, were not able to understand before. And hopefully I did not lose you in any circumstance. If, if I have lost you, if you don't understand a certain aspect, leave a comment. I'll make a follow-up video. I'll make an edit of this video, whatever it takes. Because Navy is a very underrated component of this game, but it's very fun to master. And you can get some decent results by building a Navy, having fun with that Navy, and taking out other enemy navies. So I gotta recommend, care about your navy. So make your task forces, make your task groups, sign your admirals, make your perfect fleet. Just do something with your navy, okay? Don't leave it in the starting port for the whole game. Use it. It's powerful. Even if you do lose it in a battle, as long as you've accomplished something with it, then it's all worth it, alright? 
Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. You know what's good with it. Wait, 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 wait,